We've talked a lot this morning about how the extreme fringe of the Republican Party is no longer made of made up of backbenchers, like just, you know, those yeah. weirdo few. Yeah. People Our next guests you. say the GOP's new fringe is actually members of Congress committed to good governance. CNBC founder and Newsweek editor-at-large Tom Rogers and Republican strategist and NBC News political analyst Susan Del Percio join us now. So let, let me talk to both of you guys. You, you <laughs> wrote an article in Newsweek, and we're all talking about how Kevin McCarthy is obsessed on the extremists, right? Well... It works the other way. You've got, if you have five, 10 Republicans that are actually interested in getting things done, that aren't going to follow leadership, that supports an armed insurrection against the United States government like Marjorie Taylor Greene did this weekend, why can't it work the other way, Tom? Why can't those 10 go, we're not letting you follow, follow them down a rabbit trail that's gonna lead to another two years of losing? Well, you're absolutely right, Joe. I think the segue from best actor is uh, Kevin McCarthy, bad actor in terms of allowing the extremists to become mainstream. And the fringe now are these uh, limited number of Republicans who might have their own incentive to uh, be more independent, moderate. Uh, there are actually 18 Republicans who won in districts that Joe Biden carried in 2020, and uh, 13 of them uh, won by less Less than 5% of the vote. So these are people who are going to face very tough re-election. They have their own political incentives to uh, think about how, as in more independent-minded Republicans, they can take Kevin McCarthy away from the grip of the extremists and assert some leverage here by what Susan and I call creating a democracy caucus. Yeah, so Susan, the democracy caucus, uh, who's in it, and is it big enough to help save our democracy? Well, it's those 18 members that we would propose to at least get started, uh, those who won Biden districts in 2022. But there is also some other Republicans out there who have been known to vote it with the Democrats on some issues like gun safety and same-sex marriage. The point for me was I'm so angry at seeing these what we used to call fringe can, you know, members of House of the House now mainstream. Why do their votes or their voices count more than some really successful, good intentioned principled Republicans. They shouldn't. So why not go out there and why not form a kind of deal with the Democrats? And it would it's a little out there, I know, but and it would break up everything that we know is normal now. But go out, reach out and say, we'll make you speaker, Kevin McCarthy, so you still get everything you want. But let's do a little shared government. Tom, really? Tom, just, to, to the uh, point that Susan just made, You've got a handful of Republicans who won seats that Joe Biden carried. So what are the odds you can pick off five or six to vote for a, a majority position largely formed by Democrats and thus, you know, put a stop sign on some of the crazy Republicans? What are the odds of that are happening? Well, as uh, somebody earlier in the show said, who was an aide to uh, Speaker Ryan, uh, Buck, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the moderates have not shown much guts here, but this is their time to stand up. They could have a real voice, and they got to be thinking about their own 2024 with a five-vote House of Representatives margin. There are six Republicans who were elected in New York who uh, are in, in districts that Biden won, they're going to have a very different situation come 2024 and a Democratic presidential candidate at the top of the ticket. Uh, they, they, they really have to think about how they end up uh, not only preserving themselves, but bringing some uh, damage control back to the Republican Party, which is badly damaged in terms of reputation in districts like that. Yeah, and you know, you know uh, Jonathan Lemire, it's, it's not like they have to be, quote, political moderates. Be, be conservative. Don't be radical. Be conservative. You can support less spending. You can support less taxes. You can support a strong military. You can do all the things that, that, that Republicans uh, have done up until the last six years. They don't have to be moderates. They don't have to be squishes. Just be normal and, 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 and stay out of the smelling sauce. 
Well, what changed in the last six years? And that's Donald Trump. Susan, end with you. Let's talk about the role he still plays. Weakened to be sure, but still the loudest voice in the Republican Party. How can these Republicans defy what he would want here? Well, they have to defy him anyway to get reelected next year. They won in Biden districts by staying away from Donald Trump. These aren't the extremes, the extremists of the Republicans that won their primaries, and they owe nothing to Donald Trump. And they should just remember their voices count just as much as Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and Matt Gates and all the other loud mouths. They don't get special votes because they're loud. So stand up for yourself. Do the right thing. All right, Susan Del Percio and Tom Rogers, always good to see you both. Thank you both very Thank you much guys. for coming on this morning. And that does it for us.